between 1563 and 1736, over 3,800 people were accused of practising witchcraft in Scotland. Historians reckon that two-thirds of those accused were, were executed. Irving played its, its part in these, these witch hunts. And today we have selected three stones that we'll look at that tell us a wee bit about the town's involvement in these cases. We'll begin with one in 1618. It's regarding the then minister, the Reverend David Dixon. The old door behind me is known as Dixon's Gate, named after a minister of Irvine who came here in 1618. That, that year a witch trial kicked off in the town. Four people lost their lives, two committed suicide, two were brutally executed. And the Reverend David Dixon played an important role in the process of that trial, being there at the interrogations, the tortures, the confessions and the executions. It's all recorded there in the trial record. The Reverend David Dixon would become a great figure in church politics at that time and the political world in general. He would become professor of philosophy at Glasgow University. He died in 1662 in Edinburgh. And I think that he's, he's presence and actions during the 1618 trial may well be shown in his last, his fi final words. He was asked how he was doing when he was dying and he said, I've taken all my good deeds and all my bad deeds and cast them both in a heap before the Lord and fled from both to Jesus Christ and in him I have sweet peace. If we fast forward 40 years to 1658, takes us to another witch trial. This grave slab here belongs to a minister who played a critical role in this trial. The trial record tells us that seven accused witches were executed, three from the same family, a family by the son named Wallace. And remarkably, one of these Wallace females was a 10-year-old girl. The trial record doesn't mention a Christian name, refers to her as the damsel. The record also states, a damsel of 10 years of age or thereby had spoken to the minister and some witnesses and confess it, she was present at several meetings with Satan and others and had consented unto him to be his servant. Well, that confession by the girl Wallace cost her her life. And the minister, she, it's mentioned here, is this man here. And his grave slab reads, Here lies the faithful servant of Jesus Christ, Alexander Nisbet, minister of Irving for 23 years. And he, he died in 1669. Alexander Nisbet who was involved in the 1658 trial.
If we fast forward 25 years to 1683, it brings us to another trial of another Irvine witch, accused witch. This stone here belongs to a man called Robert Weir. He was a cooper by trade. And we can see here the tools of his trade. His wife, Catherine Lorimer, stood trial in the air that year, accused of, accused of practicing witchcraft. We don't know specific details of the trial, but we do know the outcome as it is recorded in the court record. Catherine Lorimer, wife of Robert Weir Cooper of, of Irvine, was found not guilty of witchcraft. Very fortunate for Catherine, of course, as she wouldn't be lying here beside her husband and her daughter, Jean. And she was saved the same fate that happened to the young damsel Wallace in 1658 and Margaret Bartley and Isabel Crawford in 1618. So here we have the last person in Irvine, Catherine Lorimer, to be accused of witchcraft. Well, that's Irvine's connections with witch trials that have occurred in the past. Hopefully we've shed a little light in a, a dark corner of the town and the country's history. This coming Thursday, we'll, another video will be appearing which will reflect the town's wonderful seafaring traditions. This, this can be seen in many stones in the church arbor. The occupations of shipmasters, sailors, tide waiters, mariners. So look out for that. And if you like anything we've made, please share and subscribe. Thank you. Mm -hmm.